Thank you. Like the other speakers, uh, I would like to thank Song Han for his excellent organization of uh, this meeting. Uh, but not only Sung Han, but also the other people which uh, contribute to the success of the conference. Well, I would like to report about joint work with my uh, doctoral student uh, uh, Enrico Varela and the idea is to relate um, Drinfeld modular forms which occur in the title with the modular representation theory of the group G which will be GL2 over a finite field and modular representation theory in the defining characteristic so we consider representations of that group in the characteristic P where Q is a power of P. And as you will see there is a certain flow of information between the two sides which gives on either side some uh, results not formally known um, due to input from the other side. Um, and the basic idea is that uh, if you recall the classical situation if let for the moment gamma be the classical modular group and then you have the complex upper half space divided out by gamma which if compactified uh, is isomorphic with the projective line of the complex numbers with a canonical coordinate the J invariant and if you instead of dividing out gamma the, you divide out the full concurrent subgroup of some modulus N so you will get a certain modular curve x n which will be a Galois cover with group G which will be just uh, the modular group SL2 of the integers divided out by the full congruent subgroup and this is essentially SL2 of the finite ring Z modulo N. And since we have that Galois covering um, the group G acts on various data related to that modular curve for instance on spaces of modular forms or spaces of differentials and other objects and you may, uh, you may consider um, these spaces as modules under that group and you can um, uh, try to get results on modular forms from res known results about the represent uh, uh, of the complex representation theory of that uh, group and this has successfully been done for example by Hecke and uh, his school and we try to mimic that procedure in the Drinfeld modular case but there will arise serious problems because representation theory in positive characteristic is much more complicated than um, characteristic C, characteristic zero valued representation theory would, which would arise here. So um, just for getting started I have to introduce some notation and basics on Grinfeld modular forms. Um, well, we fix a finite field FQ with Q elements where Q is power of the prime P and we consider the polynomial ring over FQ. Um, its quotient field its completion at the prime at infinity and uh, the completed algebraic closure of k infinity which I label by c infinity 
these are all the notations which have occurred several times uh, in the conference so far and with slight uh, modifications. And we also consider the Drinfeld upper half plane, which is C infinity minus K infinity, upon which the group gamma, the Drinfeld modular group GL2 of A, so it acts on this object through fractional linear transformations. And so we have the notion of modular forms. So, um, well, we let mk of gamma be the C infinity vector space of modular forms of weight k. Um, well, definition of modular forms has also been presented a couple of times in the conference. Let me just give one very simple example which is basic for what follows. We consider the Eisenstein series of weight k where here z is some element of the Greenfield upper half plane and we uh, consider the double sum over all the elements a, b in A times A, which are not equal to, to the zero vector, 1 over Az plus B to the kth power. So of course K is some element of N naught, N naught. And it turns out that such a series converges and uh, it has a, the right transformation behavior and the right uh, um, boundary behavior so that it gives rise to an element of that space here. So this defines an element of mk of gamma, a modular form of weight k. And instead of just considering uh, individual spaces of modular forms, uh, we can consider the algebra formed by all of them, m gamma, which is the um, direct sum of all the m k of gamma, k larger or equal to zero. So this is a C algebra, C infinity algebra, and it turns out that it has a very simple presentation. It is isomorphic or it is a polynomial algebra in two specific modular forms classically called G and delta where G is some element of mk minus 1 of gamma. Actually G up to a constant which is unimportant for our purposes is a proportional with the Eisenstein series of weight q minus 1 and the other modular form delta belongs to m well here the k should be replaced by q minus 1 and the, the, the second modular form the Drinfeld discriminant is uh, some modular form of weight q squared minus 1 and actually up to some constants which are still unimportant for our purposes. It is the Eisenstein series of weight q squared minus 1 plus some constant times the Eisenstein series of weight q minus 1 raised to the q plus 1th power. So everything, so g and delta may be described through these two Eisenstein series. The algebras generated by either g and delta or by eq minus 1 and eq squared minus 1 agree and they form the full algebra of modular forms. And the fact that we have such a simple description of the ring of modular forms corresponds to the fact that we have a j invariant, that the modular curve for Drinfeld modules, I don't define Drinfeld modules here, but they are somewhere in the background, and um, the modular curve for Drinfeld modules without a level structure is uh, simply an affine line 
parameterized through the J invariant and the fact that we have such a simple description of the modular scheme means that we have a very simple description of the ring of modular forms. There are also slight generalizations of these modular forms but which are also unimportant for our purposes here. And for instance this fact here can be uh, rephrased in the following way. We get that mk of gamma is the direct sum over all a b in n naught squared such that a times q minus 1 plus b times q squared minus 1 equals k of uh, monomials of the form g to the a times delta to the b c infinity. So we have very, um, for, for example, you can derive very easily derive a dimension formula for m of k in terms of, um, uh, well, w once you are given k, um, that the Fantin equation has only a finite number of solutions a and b, and the number of solutions gives you the dimension of uh, that space here. Okay, this is almost the only example of, um, uh, of, an, of a group where we dispose of a complete description of the algebra of modular forms for that group. For example, uh, we could replace we could replace the group gamma, that group gamma here, um, by some subgroup gamma prime, which is of finite index in gamma. Actually, there are non congruent subgroups of finite index in gamma. This is business of Al Andreas Schweitzer. Um, but I will restrict to congruent subgroups gamma prime. So this means that gamma prime contains a full congruent subgroup, uh, say gamma n for some n in A. This is the subgroup of matrices which are congruent mod n to the unit matrix. And here we have the classic, uh, where we have the standard subgroups gamma naught of n, um, well, actually, gamma uh, 1 of n contained in gamma naught of n contained in gamma. And all of these are, all of these groups are important for arithmetical reasons. And for, uh, we can easily generalize the notion of modular form for gamma for such groups. Uh, essentially, it means a, a modular form for such a group gamma prime is, um, uh, is some holomorphic function on omega, which satisfies the transformation rule with respect to matrices in the respective group. Um, and satisfies some boundary conditions. And so we can consider also the full ring of uh, modular forms for such a subgroup gamma prime. And this is a finitely generated C infinity algebra of dimension 2 and we would like to have a presentation of that algebra a presentation through generators and relation, uh, relations. And essentially this has been done for just for, this is known, just for um, say we can uh, only if that element n of a has degree 1 and of course we can um, uh, then assume that the element, uh, if, if such an element n has degree 1, we can assume that it's the distinguished element T of A. And then such uh, genera uh, um, presentations of the, uh, of the algebra of modular forms are known for these groups. And that's it, essentially. Um, uh, if you if you are able to give a presentation for the, f for the algebra of modular forms for some element of degree d, uh, of de uh, de uh, degree 2, 
for example, it would uh, represent great pr and, and dramatic progress in the business here. So um, that's one of the problems, uh, one of the many open problems in the field. But I will immediately give you the answer for this most important case. And in order to do so, well, I should introduce some more uh, notation from now on. From now on, we consider just the group gamma prime, uh, which is the group gamma of t, the full congruence mod, uh, 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 subgroup mod t. And um, in that case, gamma modulo gamma t is canonically isomorphic with GL2 of um, GL2 of FQ, and this will be our group G in what follows, and then we have. Um, say omega divided out by gamma uh, compactified this will be the modular curve without a level structure and as in the classical case it is isomorphic with P1 over C infinity and this isomorphism is provided by the J invariant and we have the modular curve x of t um, upon which um, g acts so g acts on that group and uh, on, 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 on that curve and the quotient is this but g doesn't affect uh, effectively but uh, the group that effectively operates is uh, g divided out by its center and the center is um, the group of scalar matrices inside of G. And so we can also do the same thing. We can uh, regard data associated to that level structure. We have the group G acting upon it and let's look what comes out. Um, and first I would like to introduce the Eisenstein series in this, uh, um, uh, in this situation for an element U, U which has two components u1 and u2 in fq times fq but the zero omitted we put um, e u k some Eisenstein series of weight k adapted to the group gamma t which is just the sum 1 over a z plus b to the k where a b is congruent to u modulo t and it is easy to see that it is a modular form as the full Eisenstein series was a modular form for the full modular group this Eisenstein series subject to congruence conditions is a modular form for that congruence subgroup. And uh, so this is an element of Mk of our group gamma t and for short I omit the gamma t in the notation for what follows. This is our space Mk of modular forms. And um, well, if we also briefly write E U for the Eisenstein series of weight one with that congruence condition U. And uh, we have some easy properties of these series. For example, we have that if you have some element some non-zero scalar in FQ, then we have that E K A minus 1 U um, equals 
e k u up to the scalar a to the k. So essentially these two modular forms are the same up to the trivial constant. And this means that we can replace that system of subscripts by the projective line over fq. And so um, index with p1 fq instead of with this indexing set and more specifically for some u in fq we put e u k now this is simply e k 1 u in the former notation and for u equals infinity in p1 of fq we put e infinity k as um, the Eisenstein series of weight k with the congruence condition 0, 1. So the space spent by these Eisenstein series is precisely the same space spent by these series. So the, um, and these actually are um, these are actually linearly independent. Um, so the E U K where U runs through P1 of F Q are linearly independent. And more specifically, I should mention that the cusp here, this modular curve has one cusp. Uh, usually labeled by infinity. This corresponds to the value infinity of the J invariant. And the cusps uh, of X of T of that modular curve are canonically parametrized also by P1 of FQ. There's a canonical um, um, parameterization of the cusps here. And the linear independence here comes from the fact that for each u in P1 of FQ there exists precisely one u prime such that the Eisenstein series E k u doesn't vanish at the cusp u prime. And therefore they are linear, linearly independent and the space uh, they span has dimension q plus 1. But on the other hand, um, the dimension of mk equals kq plus 1. Quite generally, what we know about uh, modular forms and modular curves for such congruent subgroups. We know a lot about the geometry of modular curves associated with such congruent subgroups, namely we know the genera, we know the number of cusps, we know the number of elliptic points and, and uh, all these uh, geometric invariants. Also we know all the dimensions of spaces of modular forms. So this is partial information towards having a presentation of the full algebra of modular forms, but which doesn't suffice to really um, find such a presentation except for these cases here. And from these dimension formulas we find this here and therefore you see uh, for uh, putting k equals 1 you, get, uh, you just get uh, q plus 1 and therefore we have that um, um, m1 the space of modular forms of weight 1 for that group is just the space of Eisenstein series. And well, as, as I said before, I will omit uh, the superscript 1 for, um, uh, for Eisenstein series of weight 1 where u runs through um, p1 of fq. Um, Okay, and now, now I can state a um, much deeper result than, than these things here. It is the following theorem, which has been proved by Gunther Cornelissen in his thesis. Uh, 
it says the following um, put um, well and just another type of Eisenstein's years e round e, e or i this is the sum of all the Eisenstein series EU where U runs through FQ um, with the f uh, coefficient U to the I um, for I running between 0 and Q minus 1 and E around Q this is just the sum of all the u in fq, um, u, e, u, plus e infinity. So we have some other modular forms. These are modular forms of weight 1, um, q plus 1 in, um, in number but naturally indexed not by the projective line but by the um, uh, integers between 0 and q and we have these Eisenstein series and the first result is the ej for all these j are linearly independent so they form another basis for m1 Secondly, they span the full algebra M gamma T. So this is a case where an algebra of modular forms is spanned by elements of weight 1. This is something one would like to have also in the classical situation but which one doesn't know in general. You see this is also also in the general uh, in the classical situation finding presentations for rings of modular forms is a very difficult problem which has been um, solved only in a handful of cases for very with very small parameters. And uh, if you would no, m know more about such presentations you could say much more about uh, some questions in modular forms theory. So in this case um, uh, the, the form is penned but also we can give a complete set of relations for um, uh, satisfied by these elements namely um, for elements i less or equal to j less or equal to q minus 1 um, we have we have the following relations round e i e j equals e i minus 1 uh, e j plus 1 and here I should replace this by, by 1 so you have these relations not between uh, the relations are difficult to state for the uh, for the naive Eisenstein series by which we started but if we replace these Eisenstein series by these ones we get a very easy set of representatives and this is a complete complete set of relations so this means that the algebra here this algebra is a polynomial ring in q plus 1 uh, uh, variables with quadratic relations of that shape here. Um, this is quite... E0 and E2 minus 1 are the same, right? Uh, because U is in FQ and E0 and E2 minus 1. Um, they, they are all different, so uh, um, I, I, I don't quite understand the, the question. <laughs> well, we, we have Q plus 1 such series, and the one is uh, uh, such uh, functions, and one is, uh, is defined slightly different from, from the others. 
e zero is uh, the sum of uh, u e zero is the sum of u to the and we have the convention that perhaps you uh, looking for that so of course this this occurs here if you want to evaluate e zero then of course you must evaluate this and with, with that convention here so we have yeah okay um, and uh, well this uh, this has a, a number of remarkable co uh, uh, remarkable consequences um, okay I will come back to this in a moment and well we now want to make G modules out of these spaces of modular forms and um, well uh, for some function f from omega to c infinity and some element gamma of our group capital uh, gamma we define f gamma k offset to be cz plus d to the minus k f offset where gamma um, as usual as been written as a b c d and this defines the right right action of gamma on such functions and if you apply this to holomorphic functions which have the right behavior at the boundary of, of the uh, Dringfeld upper half plane you get that f gamma k equals f for all gamma and gamma if and only if f belongs to m k of gamma with some additional assumptions on f so the the transformation behavior which uh, 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 which must be satisfied uh, such that f is a modular form for gamma is simply invariance with respect to that action and the same thing holds if we apply this not to the full group but to the congruent subgroup and therefore therefore um, the group well gamma t fixes m gamma which is nothing else than ga m gamma t element wise and as a consequence the group gamma modulo gamma t which is nothing else than our group gamma acts on m k on that space here and the in the invariance is nothing else than the modular forms for the full congruent subgroup okay um, so we get well this becomes a G module through this action here but there is some subtlety in the game here the natural action is from the right and there are whenever you're doing that game you will get natural ac group actions from the left and from the right and in order to compare them we shift all the right actions to the left hand side whenever we have a right action there is the, the familiar formula we have a, um, a, a right if, if you have uh, say v is a right uh, g module then it becomes a left module under say gamma applied to v in the left sense is um, v we have to apply gamma inverse from the right hand side this is a very trivial remark 
but um, it has um, important consequences and you must be aware of, uh, of, of, of the fact of shifting from the left to the right um, in what follows. Um, well, now we have uh, these paces are G modules and, and let's just study these uh, G modules. Um, and these are G modules which are finite dimensional uh, C infinity vector spaces. And the important thing is that C infinity is an algebraically closed field that contains FQ and whatever follows in the next section will hold true if you replace the field C infinity by any algebraic uh, algebraically closed field that contains MQ. So it, to some extent um, uh, representation theory depends only on the characteristic and algebraic closeness but not on the precise um, uh, uh, on the precise um, uh, field uh, we consider. Um, well and um, let's now say a few words about the representation theory of the group G. And by a G module, this is always a finite dimensional C infinity space with a G action. And such a module is simple if it has no non-trivial submodules. And the basic problems in representation theory are always um, determine the simple G modules. And the next thing is given a natural, given a natural G module for example, spaces of modular forms find a jordan hölder series. Of course, we would like to decompose each G module into a finite sum of simple modules, but this is not possible since the situation is not semi-simple due to uh, positive characteristics. So the best thing we can hope for is finding um, uh, jordan hölder series and to determine the number, uh, well, which constituents occur which will, uh, with which uh, multiplicity in such a, a jordan hölder uh, series. And this is what we aim to do for uh, these uh, things uh, here. And um, there is, concerning that problem, we note that the number of simple modules, number of simple modules, which means number of um, isomorphism classes of simple modules, well, in, if the representations take place in the complex numbers, it's the number of conjugacy classes of the finite group G we are considering. In that case, we have to consider the number of P-free conjugacy classes. These two agree, actually. P3 means uh, classes, conjugated classes of elements whose order is not divisible by P. And for the group G, the number of all um, conjugated classes is Q squared minus 1, which you easily see from considering characteristic polynomials. And you have to subtract the number of unipotent um, uh, conjugated classes, which is Q minus 1, and the result is Q squared minus Q. So that's the number of simple modules we have. And actually I can describe these simple modules. Uh, let V be the tautological G module C infinity square where it acts from the left through matrix multiplication and we define sim k this will be just the kth 
symmetric power of that tautological module regarded as a G module and it has dimension um, K plus one. And it's surprising but the representation theory of these G modules is not entirely known. It's only partially known and we can push forward a bit of knowledge about these G modules through um, the use of Greenfeld modular forms and their representation theoretical problems. What is known about this is the following. Let Vk be the circle of SIMK. This is the largest semi-simple submodule of SIMK or turn the other way around it is the um, um, the submodule generated by all f uh, simple submodules of SIMK. And uh, then there is the following theorem. Well, actually, I write it on a new whiteboard. Um, the following theorem is a synopsis of several different result of results of different people, but essentially. Uh, the largest part is due to Steinberg and some others. It is the following um, for uh, k running through between 0 and q minus 1, uh, the v, uh, vk is a simple G module. And secondly, um, the modules, the Q squared minus Q modules, say Vk to n, um, where k uh, runs through the same set and n runs between 0 and q minus 2 um, and this is defined to be vk tensored with the determinant representation of dimension 1 to the nth power so as a vector space, this is the same vector space as Vk, but the G action is twisted by the nth power of the determinant. So these are Q squared minus Q G modules and are the a complete set of representatives for the simple modules. So we get a certain um, description of the simple modules, but so far this is inexplicit, the Sockel, how, how large is the Sockel of that representation. And this is the third part, this is essentially Steinberg's tensor product theorem, which states that, well, recall that Q equals P to the E, and for some Ks here, we can write it its periodic extension, uh, expansion uh, where i runs between 0 and e minus 1. So the ki are elements of 0, 1 to p minus 1. So if k is written um, in its periodic extension, then uh, vk then Vk is the tensor product over this I here of sim Ki of the module V but which now is um, 
um, well, I have to write it this way, f to the i, and I have to explain if v w is um, is a G module um, then W uh, to the F to the I uh, is the G module um, V W provided with the action Uh, say gamma f to the i applied to some element um, w of w is um, well we apply the ith power of Frobenius to gamma which gives you a new matrix and we apply this matrix to w and f uh, is the map x goes to x to the p which has order e under these conditions. So this is somewhat, the, the action somewhat twisted by the Galois operation. Well, you see these matrices, uh, such a matrix gamma, mm. well here gamma is some element of G, so he, it has entries in F, FQ to which you may apply Frobenius. And these Frobenius twists may, must be applied to, um, to these... Um, um, well, for each of the uh, periodic digit, Ki, you, s you first have um, the corresponding symmetric power, which we already know, which we know, and which in this case, since Ki is strictly smaller than P, is simple, and we have to twist, we have to twist um, that um, that G module by by the a ith power of Frobenius, and then then we have to take the tensor product according to all these things. And this is just um, uh, the description of VK. So I, I should write isomorphic here in this case. So we know all the, uh, we have a description of all the, um, um, of all the simple modules and we know how uh, such, an, uh, such a simple module looks like. Okay, and now, um, well, in order to state Well, unfortunately, I still <laughs> I still need some some further uh, ingredients. We make another definition, namely for some number l less or equal to q minus one. We consider the character chi to the l, which goes from the Borel subgroup of. <coughs> G, the Borel subgroup consists of the upper triangular matrices in G, and we consider the character from B to C infinity star, which to each matrix A, B, 0, D um, associates um, D to the L regarded as an element of C infinity. So this is a one-dimensional representation of B and we take the induced representation from B to G of that chi L here and call it simply I L which as an as a G mod uh, which, which uh, has dimension Q plus one 
um, and uh, is a G module. And now it turns out that um, uh, uh, we have the following properties. Um, for each L like this here, sim L embeds as a G module into I L. And secondly, we ma can make statements about, for example, I Q minus one. Uh, this is has dimension. Um, uh, it has dimension q plus one, and it is isomorphic with a direct sum of sim q minus one plus the uh, trivial one-dimensional module c infinity. And moreover, uh, the the i one here, this is isomorphic with sim q. Um, so we, had, we can relate these, um, the symmetric modules, which we know to as uh, uh, symmetric powers, which we essentially control due to that theorem, and this theorem may be slightly extended. So for example, we, um, th this module, provided k is less or equal to q, is well understood, and one knows um, Jordan Hölder series. It's very complicated to give the description, but it's completely explicit. And when one knows these things, and in particular, uh, in particular, we can relate these to the IL. These IL have always dimension Q plus one, and it turns out that these data here suffice to give. Uh, satisfactory description of our uh, modular form spaces as G modules. And um, well, I will try to, in principle, time is over as I, as I see, so perhaps very short time. Um, I can now give a description of the M case. Namely, this is the third part, uh, which is M K as a G module. We have essentially three results. The first is quite simple. We have M, well, if we define M k i. This is the space of all f in M k. f vanishes of order larger or equal to i at all cusps. So this is a subspace and actually a submodule of um, the G submodule. We have our M k and we have our mk1, mk2, and so on, up to some ml, uh, uh, and then we, uh, the, this um, uh, zero module will come. And for instance, these, this is the space of cusp forms. And uh, so the difference between these two spaces is simply the space of Eisenstein series, which is spent by either the EU or the E round uh, I, which has dimension Q minus one, Q plus one. And so this is th that step in the filtration. And also all the other steps in the filtration have co dimensions Q minus one. So M, say, M, K, L, M, K, L minus one. All these steps are of co-dimension Q plus one, and here something rests. And this is a filtration of G submodules. And what we get is that um, as a first result, we have that M, K, I, is canonically identified as a G module with M K 
plus q plus 1 i plus q so with a certain shift of the vanishing order by multiplication of a modular form with the modular form h which has also occurred in other talks and actually h um, c h is the one dimensional space uh, m q plus 1 q and so this space is one dimensional and it in uh, it, uh, it is um, a, a basis vector is just the, the uh, well known modular form h and this gives an uh, isomorphism of these two g modules but this is not completely correct but uh, since this H is not fully invariant under, under the group G, but a certain determinant uh, acts on it. We, we must correct this by some one here. And always putting a one means I have to, um, to tensor that, um, uh, that G module with the one dimensional representation provided by the determinant. So this is, this is nothing else than MK. I tends up with the determinant representation. So this is um, a technical remark and the, the true uh, result is the following. We get MK is isomorphic as a G module with sim K Q. I write here only isomorphic and not with a canonical isomorphism because so far our isomorphism there are some choices in the game and, and it is not quite clear whether the isomorphism is really canonical. In particular it's not known for the moment, we, uh, it relies on complicated uh, calculations which still have to be carried out, whether these isomorphisms we construct are compatible with the multiplicative structure of the algebra of modular forms. So that's one theorem and the next, so I, I, I will stop in very few uh, minutes, is, um, well, we get that, um, uh, well, we, uh, I, I will not write down the details, but I can tell you if you are interested in, we can make statements about all the quotients which occur. Here that quotient is uh, the quotient of the space of all modular forms, modular the cusp forms, is the space of Eisenstein series. We can d give a description as a G module, and we can also give descriptions as G modules of all these successive quotients which occur, with the exception of the last term. This uh, uh, this must uh, this uh, this uh, escapes our considerations so far. So we we get uh, we control a very large part of a uh, Jordan Hölder series of M K. Um, uh, this is only a result about M K, but since we can um, since we can relate um, M K with uh, symmetric powers, we get the following situation. Consider um, just the full symmetric algebra of V which is indexed by 0, 1, and so on, up to Q. And this part is well known due to Steinberg's theorem, essentially. And our results now tell us, uh, essentially, uh, that um, uh, theorem here tells us that we know what happens with all these things, 2Q, uh, 3Q, and so on. And what remains, and what still is, uh, um, uh, uh, should be further studied are um, all these G modules which occur in between. So the theorem which I wanted to state here is quite complicated and, uh, but it gives a, compl a completely explicit description of, um, of all the quotients of these filtrations in terms of modules I, L and SIM, L. Thank you and I apologize for...